Ryan O'Reilly, Nola Chari to the Toronto Maple Leafs. The first, the second, the third, even the fourth to retain from the, the Wild. So they get 25% from the Wild, 50%. The Leafs create so much space without even giving up roster players here. Obviously, the LTIR cup. So W or L in the chat for the Leafs. I think Blues fans are going to be extremely happy with this return. They should be, at least. I think the Blues, Blues fans should be extremely happy. Leafs, though. Leafs perspective, specifically, W or L. I would, I, would, I would severely disagree with someone if they said L for the Blues, man. This is such a W for the Blues in their perspective. Even with, and I'll say this, the Blues have stringed a couple wins together recently. So I'm just thinking, like, the Blues were kind of on the fence, probably. And Dubas was just like, here, have it. We want O'Reilly now. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> this, this could backfire again, but Dubas is showing he has the balls to do it. And I got to give respects to it, but this is all in now. Dubas is going all in. There's no bullshit now. Dubas is going all in. And yeah, this is kind of a home run swing. I, I personally still will say, I think they still need to make one more significant move. Because to me, Achari, I love the fit for Achari on this team. He adds a must-needed like fourth line scoring with that edge, right? On that fourth line. And I think, as I said, to me, my ideal fourth line for the playoffs, for the Leafs right now, is Kampf, Aston Reese, and Achari. And that's why I was kind of making that hot take about Nick Benino, Because Benino saw that Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh um, Cup just right there with Aston Reese. So, but I, Achari, Achari was with the Blues... Uh, or with the Bruins, sorry, when the Blues won the Cup. So, And then he obviously joined the Blues. So Achari and O'Reilly, I, I think these are two good playoff fits. But again, I, I still think they need to go for one more move. And again, yeah, we've talked about it, guys. If, if they do all this just to lose to Tampa, it's going to be tough. I'm going to pull it up, guys, on the, on the stream here. But please, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. We're on the way to 50,000. I really appreciate it. A lot of Leafs stuff here, but also overall NHL um, stuff. So let's pull it up on the timeline here. This is, <laughs> this is crazy, man. So we'll pull up Ryan O'Reilly. We'll pull up some Dubas tweets here too as well. Uh, let's see. Next. Uh, all right, Nuge. Oh, wrong one. There we go. So Ryan O'Reilly, acquired by Toronto, is a, uh, is a top six two-way playmaking center who typically has a very strong defensive impact. His production is down this year, but he's still creating chances at a high rate. Um, so obviously, O'Reilly 5-on-5, five five, I mean, this is, this is well known at this point. Ryan O'Reilly 5-on-5, five five, extremely reliable defensively. Um, that's always been the case for the most part. Uh, when his offense is at a high rate, and I believe it will be... Like, I mean, at this point, if you're looking at O'Reilly... Um, He's helping out even that second power play quite a bit. So I think if you have O'Reilly on that second power play with Bunting, uh, Yarn Crow, it takes Angle off the power play potential potentially. And I, I think that's a huge dub. I think you run two defensemen on that second power play, O'Reilly, Bunting, Yarn Crow. That's a pretty underrated second power play, especially if you go get another forward still. Um, but it, it, it's tough because, again, the Leafs for me, as long as, long as they can win a round, then I think a guy like O'Reilly will push push kind of um, them over the top at that point. I just think this, this curse thing, this mindset thing for the Leafs um, is obviously tough. But anyways, let's, uh, let's go through some more tweets. Con Smythe winner, cup winner. O'Reilly's got uh, a pretty nice resume on him. So this is the full trade, guys, for anyone that didn't see it. So the Leafs have acquired Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari in a three-team trade with St. Louis and Minnesota. For everyone that is not aware. So the basically three team trade. Sure. If you want to call it that, that's why a lot of people are going to compare this to the Felino trade as well, because in the Felino trade with the Leafs and Columbus, they got San Jose involved. And I believe it was actually for a fourth round pick as well uh, to retain 25%. So uh, we can pull it up on cap friendly when it's ready. So we'll get the salaries going, but this basically gets the Leafs, um, especially with the LTIR from Muzzin, they'll be cap compliant without even moving those roster players, as I said. So I still, in my head, I think Dubas still has another big move. And maybe that's naive for me to say, because I thought that after the Felino trade, when he made that kind of move, um, I still think Dubas needs to make one more big move. I, like the contracts of Kerfoot, Engvall, Hall, that contributes to a lot, and it, it can get you a big contract, and it can get you a big player that even maybe has passed this year. So 
Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that again, guys. I really do believe that at the end of the day, this is a W move for what Dubas is trying to do in his last year. But if the Leafs don't go on a serious run here, it's not going to be a win of a trade at all, even if they pass the first round, unless O'Reilly stays past this year. I think the best case scenario where the Leafs don't obviously win a cup this year, uh, but the best case scenario in a realistic sense is the Leafs for me winning a round or two even, and then O'Reilly doing, he's not going to sign as low as like some of these true vets, but maybe a short term, like one or two year deal with Toronto uh, to stay past this year. And then I could see them going for their big, big run next year. But you know what? I think a lot of Leaf fans have that just first round mentality in their head, which is, it's honestly, you can call it a loser mentality in some ways, but obviously Leaf fans just want to see that one round at this point. Uh, We have over 300 in the chat. Again, guys, I really do appreciate you hitting that subscribe button, hit that like, the notification bell. Um, We're going to have to have an emergency podcast with Lucas probably tomorrow uh, earlier. So if you guys like these live streams, just chatting it up, shooting the shit. Uh, I'm going to read a bunch of comments and questions in the chat. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm so tripped right now, man. I was so <laughs> I was like in bed watching a movie, just looking for a nice chill Friday night because we're going out tomorrow night and just <laughs> do this on a Friday night. What a guy. 